Hello, this is Dr. Jack Jackson. In this video, we will be discussing some of the most basic primitive concepts of mathematics, the basic concept of number. We are starting our study of history of mathematics as far back as we can go. One of the most basic mathematical concepts is a concept of number. In this week's lectures, will, in this playlist on YouTube, we will be examining basic concepts of natural numbers and looking at various ancient numeration systems from the Greek, uh, Egyptian, Roman, Babylonian, and Mayan cultures. We will be looking at notating natural numbers and performing some basic operations within these ancient numeration systems. We will also be tracing the development of our current Hindu Arabic numeration system. We may also look a little at larger sets of numbers, including integers, rational numbers, real numbers, and complex numbers. Uh, but we will be mostly focused on the natural numbers. If we start our study of mathematics at the very beginning, then we must look at the most basic concept of number. Although numbers were developed to communicate and solve numerous practical physical problems, number is actually an abstract concept. The origin of human use of numbers is so old that we have no idea who first used them or when or where. The use of at least some concept of number is universal. The most basic version of a number is in the primitive cultures that have the concept of one, two, and many. One of my graduate school professors joked that there was a tribe in South America that their entire use of numbers was one, two, and many and that he planned on retiring there to teach number theory. Well, how hard could it be? However, nearly every known primitive culture has at least some rudimentary concept of the natural numbers. That's the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so forth. The counting numbers. Notice I did not include 0 in the natural numbers. If you throw in 0 as well, that's the set of whole numbers. Zero was not as quickly uh, recognized in cultures. Number words often predate num numerals in cultures. A numeral is a symbol, a physical representation, to represent a number, which is an abstract concept. For example, the numeral right here, this one, represents this many. the same as the number of fingers on one hand. The English number word five is also used for this number. Of course, there are number words in other languages for the same number. However, the number is actually the abstract idea of this amount. Another related very primitive concept is the concept of a one-to-one -one correspondence. Now by this, I don't mean a sophisticated definition such as you might see and foundations of mathematics, abstract algebra, or real analysis. Instead, I mean merely the recognition that the number of fingers on one hand is the same as the number of fingers on the other hand. They match up. It was a big intellectual step when someone realized that keeping track of sheep could be represented by some marks on a hide rather than actually having to carry around the sheep. Similarly, learning number words allowed one to count without actually making marks. If you think about how very young children first learn about numbers, it parallels these early developments. They often first learn the sequence of the smallest counting words, and then they later associate it with a number of fingers. Next, then they can take a number of objects and count them, perhaps with the use of their fingers. However, these concepts are so basic and universal that they appear in all ancient cultures. These important first mathematical discoveries are so universal and so ancient, we have no idea when or where they were discovered, much less who discovered them. Numeration systems. As we study various ancient numeration systems, consider carefully their relative strengths and weaknesses. One may also notice that the simpler the numeration system is, the smaller is its tendency of adaptability. Consider why our modern num number system is superior to these ancient systems. What makes our numeration system better? 
Is our system always superior or do the ancient systems have advantages over our system? As you're considering these questions, it will be difficult to separate the actual reasons our system is superior or not from the fact that you could just use it better because you're more familiar with it. Think about talking to someone who had used one of the ancient numeration systems for many years and had never seen our system. How could you convince them that our system is better? One can objectively say that the Hindu Arabic numeration system that we use today is superior to Roman numerals. However, when the Hindu Arabic numeration system was first introduced to Europe in the 13th century, its ad adoption was fairly rapid, but not immediate and not without resistance. Think about the resistance to changing from the old English system of measurements to the objectively superior metric system in the United States. Probably the most basic numeration system is the use of tally marks. A tally mark is simply using one mark for each object that is represented. For example, the number of fingers on one hand, what we call five in English and represent as with the symbol five in the Hindu Arabic numerals is represented this way right here with five vertical marks. The number of strokes is exactly the same as the number of fingers, a one-to-one -one correspondence. A later method would be to group the tally marks in groups of five so that we use four vertical marks and the fifth mark, instead of being vertical as well, would be sliced diagonally across it so that we see groups of five like this. Notice that this is a grouping. Grouping is the key to understanding various numeration systems. The next few videos and sections will show how different grouping methods led to various ancient numeration systems.